November 1, 2005, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my 121 Point Mike Ground School. In this video, I'm going to talk about NDBs, which is pilot speak for non directional beacon, which is even more gobbledygook for a tower that just sends out a signal in all directions. NDBs have been going away, but you can still find them in remote locations like Alaska because their signals travel a lot farther than VOR signals. Now, of course, GPS trumps everything, but if that goes down, then you need reliable ground stations that uh, can get you where you need to go. So NDBs still have their place. NDBs are shown on VFR charts as little magenta dots with a circle around it and then more magenta dots around that. And it's shown similarly on IFR charts. You might also uh, have seen NDBs co-located with outer markers on instrument approaches. In this case, they're called locator outer markers, abbreviated as LOM on the charts. And I'm going to, of course, cover those in the instrument approach video. I'm going to explain how NDBs work and how you can use them. You can still track NDBs, even though they don't have radials like VORs do. Like I mentioned about 30 seconds ago, NDBs is a tower that just sends out a signal in all directions. It sends out at a specific frequency, and it's in the AM radio band. So do what you want with that information. Of course, with today's Bluetooth and everything, capabilities, that's kind of uh, outdated, but still. NDBs are a bit skittish, and they can point toward lightning strikes and things, so make sure you don't navigate towards a lightning strike. In the cockpit, probably near your VOR display, you'll find your ADF, which stands for Automatic Direction Finder. It's a yellow needle that points toward the NDB. It's that simple. It always points toward the NDB. Now, if you're lucky, you've got what's called an RMI, or Radio Magnetic Indicator, and that integrates the compass card built right in, and so it gives you a direct readout to your bearing to the station, which is really handy, but I've never been lucky enough to fly with one of those. Bearing simply means a direction in relation to something else. The ADF needle on the RMI always points to the NDB, and the rotating compass card behind it always keeps track of the aircraft's heading as you change directions. Unfortunately, RMIs are more expensive and rare in small aircraft, and so you're probably stuck with the manual setup. It looks like a VOR radial selector, and you can rotate the little compass card to align it with your magnetic heading, but don't. And now I'm going to explain why. Because you'll forget to rotate it. You've already got enough to do in the cockpit, and keeping up with your heading on the little ADF is an unnecessary task, and it creates a possibility that you'll dial in the wrong number and possibly get lost in the air. Let me show you an example. Say you're heading 330, and you've got your ADF dialed into the same. You're directly south of the NDB right now, and the NDB shows that the needle's pointing to 360. Upon reaching the 180 radial, you turn directly to 360, but you forget to rotate the little card on the ADF, and now its indication is wrong. When you shoot an NDB approach and are constantly correcting right or left, and then you also have to rotate the little compass card, it's a big hassle and adds to the stress of an already stressful approach. So, I was taught to just leave the ADF set on north, it eliminates the confusion about updating it, and uh, it just makes it better, and that it always agrees with your heading. Okay, so what do you do about that? Well, you leave it alone, and you use your brain to superimpose the ADF needle over on your heading indicator, like this. It's really not that hard. All you're looking for is the degrees right or left, or right or left in your case, of your heading, and then you copy the needle, and then you paste it on your heading indicator. And then it reads correctly all the time. Let's do several examples so you can kind of see what I mean. We can first use the NDB just to triangulate our position without worrying about tracking it at all. We're headed 180 and the ADF needle points to 300. You'll notice that the head of the needle is 30 degrees ahead of your left wing. Or of course said another way, it's 60 degrees left of your nose. You mentally copy the ADF needle over to your heading indicator, and then you read the bearing to the NDB, which is 120, which means you're somewhere along this line. 
But where exactly? Well, you need a second piece of info. If you've got distance measuring equipment, and there's a DME co-located with your NDB, then you know exactly where you are. You're 30.5 miles away on this line right here. Yeah. If you don't have DME, then you have to use another NDB for triangulation, kind of like your VOR. You dial in the frequency for the second NDB, and if it shows 085 degrees, that is 5 degrees ahead of your right wing, or 85 off your nose. So, you copy the ADF needle over to your heading indicator, and it reads 265, doesn't it? Now that you have two bearings to two known locations, you can fix your position right here. See how easy that was to copy and paste? My instructor didn't call it that back then, but that's what I'm going to call it, because now that we're in the digital age, copy and paste makes sense to everyone. Let's do one more copy and paste example. Here's what we've got. You're heading 160, the ADF reads 250. So what is the bearing to the station, long pause? It's 050, isn't it? The needle is 20 degrees behind your left wing, which is 050. Radials are measured from the stations, though. And if it's 050 to the station, you're on the reciprocal radial. And what's that? 230, isn't it? 50 plus 180, or 5 plus 18, and then times 10, is 230. Okay, so you can see how easy the copy and paste method really is. Don't look at the numbers on the ADF. You just look at the degrees right or left of your nose or tail, or ahead or behind of your wings, and then superimpose that on your heading indicator. Now back when I learned to fly, there were still quite a few NDBs, and knowing how to track to or from them was required, as was shooting an NDB approach during instrument training. I'll cover how to do that, of course, though, in the InstaB NDP Instrument Approach video, which will be part of my Instrument Approach series. Now, if you're going to get where you'd like to go, you need to know how to track an NDB. It's really not that hard, it's just different. This is the original way that we had to navigate by instruments. So let's say that you want to track the 030 radial to the NDB. If there's no wind, you'll simply keep the needle off your nose, and you're heading on 030. Your heading indicator will say 030, and your ADF natal will say 360. And when you cut and paste over to your heading indicator, it'll say 030. Now what happens if you start to drift off course? And you will. The needle will point right or left of your nose. If you're 5 degrees to the right of your course, the needle will show 5 degrees left. And so, how do you correct to get back on your desired track? You double your deflection. If the needle is pointing 5 degrees left, you'll turn 10 degrees left. This will move the needle 5 degrees to the right of your nose, and now you'll just wait until your needle points back onto your desired track. Then you'll turn back to the right on your course. Now, you could just turn to keep the needle centered right off your nose, right? But that's homing, not tracking. Homing doesn't care about how you get there as long as you get there. If you've got a crosswind, and you're pushed to the right of your track, and all you do is simply correct to point your nose at the NDB, then your track across the ground will look like this. That's not what we want, pretty much ever. We want to fly straight lines, and ATC expects you to do that. This is the difference between tracking and homing. Tracking is a straight line. Homing isn't. Now, we're back on course, and we see the needle flip as we fly over the station. Don't overcorrect though, just like on VORs, as you fly over the cone of confusion above the station. Simply stay on your heading and wait a bit after you pass before you really do anything. Just like VORs. I said that a second ago, didn't I? Now, what we have here, we got to do a little bit differently. We ordinarily would turn toward the head of our needle and double our deflection. But when we're tracking away from an NDV, we have to drag the tail. We still use the double your deflection rule, but we have to turn away from the tail and drag it back towards center. And if you simply look at the head, you can see that it's on the bottom of the ADF, and we're still turning toward the side with the head, 
so it might help you to think of that way instead of maybe dragging the tail. It, whatever makes it work for you. Now when you've got wind to deal with, your heading and your superimposed ADF needle won't be coincident. You'll have to crab and you'll set up a couple of degrees uh, right or left of your nose and then your headings will look something like this when you're tracking with a crosswind. You're going to make corrections, like I mentioned, depending on whether you're tracking to or from the station, and you're going to keep the ADF needle on the radial that you want. It's really not that difficult, but like anything else, it's new, it'll require a little bit of practice. Of course, the ADFs aren't new, they just might be new to you. Now that you know how an NDB works and how to use it, it might be a good time to uh, check out the other video on NDB approaches. Now, of course, if you're watching this within the first few weeks that this video goes live, that video won't be out just yet, so check back later. Or better yet, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, so that you'll be notified when that next video is out. It'll help me out a lot, and you can also help me out by leaving a comment down below. And stay with me on 121.mike.